Today we're at a passive house home that we're going to be pressure testing but also troubleshooting to get the level of air tightness down to 0.6 ACH. To help the builder out we're going to be using an in-house developed app called Envelope Integrity Reporter or EIR. We're going to be showing you how we can document where issues are throughout the building envelope for air tightness with the app. So here we are, this is the, um, we're on the ground floor, so we can put multiple floors into EIR. We, we can zoom in and mark up the actual location of the floor plan, or we can mark up multiple locations of the floor plan. In this particular case, we've got one hole. It's a plumbing penetration through the floor. We take a photo of that, and then we can mark it up. We can actually be quite specific on some information here. But what we'll do is we'll just mark this up as a circular issue, 10 mil hole, and we can update all of the information within these defects in a web interface when we get back to site. But primarily, this is a tool that allows us to log machine gun multiple issues off a floor plan, which then can be either remediated um, off the actual app directly to show a remediation photo, which we can actually approve, uh, or we can generate a PDF report so that it, all of these issues can be divvied out to individual trades for remediation. Well, let's go on to another one. Uh, we'll find a much larger issue, which we've found just here where the HRV is penetrating through the floor. This can be uploaded once we know that we've got a good internet connection, and I'll go through that process. But right now, I'm going to go through and log this particular issue that's going through the floor, and that's done. So now, as you can see, we've got two defects here, and we can actually run an update, start uploading those straight into the database so that we can generate a report once we've gotten back to the office, or even generate a report while we're on site. Now we've set up the blower door test to create that pressure differential to troubleshoot using smoke or even just filling with your hand. We're going to catch up with the builder after I've done this and then we're going to troubleshoot together. We're troubleshooting today. We're going to be we're documenting some stuff for you here so that you can potentially uh, tackle some of these things that we find later. But you've got some amazing glass here that's uh, looking straight out into the ocean. How heavy is that pane? I've never seen anything this big before. Uh, in my they're life. about 420 kilos each. Those those two panes. Pretty significant. We had a 35 ton crane set up in the street to yep. lift all this glass into position. The architects, Zan Architects, have designed this house. It's pretty important that we captured those views and also captured a nice little sort of northwest courtyard. Both ends of the building are pretty much all glass. It's a bit of an interesting building where it's sort of the bedroom wing ensuite area overhangs and sort of floats off the house. Yep. So there's some pretty significant structural steel elements in the building as well, wow. which we've um, tried to eliminate thermal bridging as much as we possibly can. You've also got issues here where the wrap's running into one of these beams as well and protruding yeah, through. But yeah, so that, we've had, that... to, had to use the beam, some structural beams in a number of areas as, as the air tightness junctions. And there is an insulation layer over the top of all of this as well, obviously, on the outside of the, of the air tightness layer. But here, one of the main difficulties is the fact that the air tightness actually extends outside of the building and into the subfloor of the, this pod that's hanging off the side of the building. So it's pretty hard to get the air tightness continuous there and a lot of the services are penetrating that area as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty tough one. It's probably one of the tougher ones we've done in terms of air tightness. Wow. Yeah. You've also got a box gutter hiding inside all of this as well, don't you? On the well, there's actually a box gutter at the end of this roof, yep. the main pavilion, yep. um, but that's actually, that's outside the building envelope. And we've, we have got one that's over the building envelope between these two pavilions, but that's obviously really well insulated on the underside of the box gutter. So one thing that I notice on a lot of the just mainstream builds is that these corners are left out or these junctions, T-junctions are left out for insulation. Yeah. This is something that just doesn't happen on your jobs. And I, I can see already I've just come to site and there's skinny slithers of insulation that you guys put into all these gaps of T-junctions coming yeah, off yeah. the side. Yeah, it's really important to make sure that you 
get insulation into every possible nook and cranny yeah. of, of the project. And obviously, where this is a double stud wall, so there's a 140 mil structural stud wall, and then there's a 70 mil insulated stud wall on the inside of the air tightness layer. Yeah. So wow. the whole building has already got one thermal blanket all the way around it, and then this is a second thermal blanket, and not all of this insulation's in yet, obviously, yeah. because we're trying to troubleshoot air tightness today. So if we cover the wrap completely, then we'll if we do have any issues, we won't find them. Correct. All right, well, let's get into it. Let's start troubleshooting. This detailing is very common for double storey homes here in Australia. Normally in between the two floors, there is just no insulation. There's also no air barrier. We'd like to see an air barrier in between floors of homes. In this case, the air barrier is behind this insulation. As you can see here, these guys, they're putting insulation in between all of these beams. This is great. We'd like to see this a lot more often in mainstream built homes. These sliders, compared to your conventional sliders that you can buy to put into your home, are amazing, especially from a U-value perspective, but also air tightness, but they're still not perfect. Uh, I haven't really seen one sliding door that does not leak at the top track. And here's an example of how they leak. And in the scheme of things for a passive house, it's not, it's not that bad, but you know they still do leak, and it's quite obvious, as you can see. So we've just finished up troubleshooting for another happy customer and we'll go back and report these, but this builder will remediate all these issues and we'll have to come back and retest to make sure that some of these issues that were found, because it'll take a bit of time to remediate, that they've actually been successfully remediated to achieve the 0.6 level of air tightness that's required for this one. Yeah. So, so here we are with Dale again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're troubleshooting this amazing house again. Um, again? Yeah. We didn't do it once, did what? we? Well, it's just an amazing house. You seem oh, to yeah. always do amazing homes. Uh, we're pretty lucky. We got some yeah. pretty cool projects, yeah. yeah. 